Hi, it's Ann. Thanks for stopping by. I'm really excited about today's project. We are going to use a very unexpected craft supply. Although it has the word craft right in it, it's craft stick. In the US, we often call these popsicle sticks. Um, there's the smaller varieties that actually came in the little popsicles that we used to enjoy as kiddos. And uh, maybe we still do. Um, but you can just, you know, you can just get these, you know, unused, un unsullied by, <laughs> unsullied by, uh, by human uh, uh, saliva. Um, you, you can get them at craft stores. You can get them anywhere craft supplies are sold, including Amazon. And I had, I had some um, left over from doing a project with Barney, our little grandson. He was into a phase a couple of years ago where he was really interested in making catapults. You know, where you take a plastic, you know, spoon and, and, and you have this whole little thing made out of craft sticks and you can launch like marshmallows and stuff. It's, they're very mild catapults, but he was really interested in the engineering of those. His catapult phase uh, seems to have passed, but I still have some, uh, some of the craft sticks. And uh, some of them that you can get, this this came with a project of his that we got at the public library where they're actually stained. And I haven't used these for anything. Um, we may or may not use these today, but you know, if you look around, my guess is you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have some. And we're actually gonna make little journal cards out of them. We're actually gonna experiment with how we can actually have a little journaling space uh, on the backs of these. It won't be big journaling space, but it should be just enough for uh, some kind of special things we might want to remind ourselves of. So there's several different ways that we're going to treat the surface of these craft sticks. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited about the, the kind of whimsical, unusual touch that they can add to a journal. First thing I'm gonna do with this batch, and it doesn't have to be three, but I thought, uh, might as well do a bit of a mass make. And I'm um, I'm gonna try stenciling on top. I did a little bit of this before and it worked pretty well. Now I gotta find my blue distress ink. Here it is. And I just, I love salty ocean. And uh, I'm just gonna take my blending brush. I'm just going to put these three together and that's, you know, for no reason other than I didn't want to waste any um, any of this effort. And I'm not going to worry too much about getting them positioned correctly. And we're just, well, the little one that I practiced with earlier did really well with this. So I'm just holding these three together and running my blending brush over them. If you suddenly hear a man shouting yes in the background, that is because my husband is watching the Broncos. <laughs> and uh, last I checked with him, they were doing pretty well. There we go. That's not too bad. It could have gone maybe a little bit heavier there. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm okay with uh, with that. So I'm gonna set two of them aside, and let's think about how we could finish this off. Uh, I have my paper punch here, and it's surprising that this actually. I'm gonna mark a hole here so I don't. I kind of have to work from the side. Um, this, this is the Crocodile Big Bite, and if you have any kind of a hole punch, it probably is going to be able to punch through your little wooden craft stick without much problem, I say, as I'm having a problem. There we go. That wasn't too much of a problem. And... If it doesn't seem to work, you know, you can always just, uh, I mean, you could get out a Dremel and, uh, you know, drill a little hole. You could uh, probably just take a nail. You might have a little bit of a problem with splitting. You know, this is going to, this is, looks like it's wanting to split a little bit there. I'm really not going to worry about it. Let's treat this just as though it were paper from here on. I'm going to just stress the edges. And then we're going to think about a way we can dress it up just like it were a paper tag.
And that wood takes the distress ink pretty well. We're gonna look at some ways we can make them even fancier, but we're starting with the basics. Now, let's um, get out a jump ring. I could just tie a little ribbon in there, but I wanna have, I kinda wanna have it be more like a little tassel so it's flopping around a little bit more. I get this you know, lifetime supply of uh, jump rings in the jewelry finding section. I can't remember if I got that at Joanne Fabrics or it might have come from Amazon as well. But they just pull apart easily with your fingers and maybe slide underneath your fingernail a little bit there. And they just pinch back into place. And let me pull out a couple of, that's a little, a little piece of coffee dyed muslin and a little bit of lace. And I'm gonna slip this through here. And uh, let me find a little piece of twine to tie that with. Never too far away. And then in a moment, we're going to use some acrylic markers. Um, I sound like I'm a big ad for Amazon uh, today. I don't, uh, don't mean to be. But uh, it is handy. You might have acrylic markers as well. And I was kind of excited to get them. One, they were super inexpensive. I got a pack of, I don't know, I think 24 or so. Whoops. Somehow that completely bypassed the little bunch of fabric that I wanted to wanted to tie up. I must have let that thread slip through that little open space. That's okay. I'm going to backtrack and just make certain I catch it this time. Anyway, I have, uh, I have all of these little markers that I got. Was there 24? Was there maybe more? I don't remember. Um, but I was excited to get them. I was thinking that they would be like acrylic paint like the paint markers because I think those are like the Posca markers and uh, the Posca markers were a little bit little bit too posh uh, for me but I saw these on sale during Amazon Prime days and I thought I'm gonna get this batch for $9.95. Now you get bargain craft supplies at your peril at least I find I do because sometimes they can be just not so great um, but so far I'm really kind of liking these and you know, so here's our here's our little our little tag, and let's what can we use for journal space? I've been thinking a lot about this. I think this is a nice little way to write, like a little reminder. You know, a very short, um, like a little quote, uh, or just a reminder. Maybe there's a verse or numbers for a verse that you might want to remind yourself of. Just something that's going to be significant to you. And I thought that this acrylic marker might be good. So there's one end that's blunt and round, and there's one that's more fine writing. So I'm going to simply write a little reminder for these times. Breathe in. Breathe out. And I, I like that. I'm not going to do anything else to this. I have an idea of where I'm going to put this in a journal, but I'm going to do several more and then we'll, we'll just kind of go through and stick them in a journal. But there is this cute little thing. It's not very colorful. You could put more stuff on it. This was just on the bare wood. Now I'm gonna show you, uh, I tried doing some stamping um, earlier on, um, on some craft sticks. With reasonable success, um, I did the same thing with three of them together so I wouldn't waste um, ink. This one came out really nice. But these two, I noticed, 
yeah, they were side by side, by side like this. Um, this particular color of ink, it must have been a, a juicier, more moisture laden sort of ink than the others. And boy, it sucked into the wood fibers and just made that really blurry thing. And I, to me, I, I just, I didn't like how that looked. So I thought maybe I should try uh, just prepping the surface a little bit. And so I got out, you know, my, our old friend Gesso. I get a lot out of that. And I just covered a couple of craft sticks with just a thin layer of gesso because I thought that's going to take the treatment um, of, uh, uh, of that stamping a little bit better. So why don't we try, why don't we try, I could try those leaves again, but I do have two that worked out okay. I was thinking about doing one that had sort of a post office theme. Um, I might do, you know, I think I'm going to do some stenciling again. Or do I want stenciling? Yep, I think I am going to do stenciling, but a different stencil. And see if I can find. Yeah, I'll kind of use this. This looks like Alfred Hitchcock in Vertigo. Mm. There we go. All right, let's, we're just gonna go with this blue again because it's out and it's here. And it's nice. Yeah, this is the stenciling with the Distress ink on the gessoed surface. So maybe it takes it a little bit better. Yeah, it stands out more, I gotta say. I gotta say I'm liking this. There's almost nothing that can go wrong when you gesso a surface. This is vintage-y and kind of shabby chic. This is a lot more vibrant. Um, so I was thinking about doing some post, having sort of a postal stamp kind of, uh, kind of situation going on. So let me get out my Versafine. We're probably only going to do one here. And this is sort of a big stamp. Well, because it is a big stamp, what the heck, might as well do two together and not waste any of that ink. get more of the postmarks in there. Yeah, that's kind of nice. And what part? This part didn't get in there very much, so I think I'm going to come in with that on the side. Or should I? No, I really should mix it up and Got a little stamp there, a stamp of a, 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 a stamp stamp. There we go. Boy, that. That surface took that stamp really nicely, didn't it? Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then we'll do this little airmail postmark. And I'm going to come in on the bottom part here and get some of that cancellation. Well, they were sort of lapped up over each other. There, those are cute. Now, what I had in mind, and I hope this is gonna work, um, I wanna use a little bit of Mod Podge to put something on the back. And here's what I think I would like to put on the back. 
instead of writing like we did with our breathe in, breathe out, I'm going to take a, a, a little piece that I found. This is one of the, one of the, <coughs> excuse me, one of those kind of funny little books uh, uh, that you find in thrift stores a lot that, uh, you know, they're like words of wisdom or something like that. Well, I, I like those because they often have little phrases that you can cut out and put onto a journal. And uh, at this one, diet is not a verb. Well, guess what it can be. I don't really, don't really like that one that much. But uh, anyway, this is too wide here, but I can cut it. And I'm gonna try adhering with a little bit of Mod Podge here. So we'll kind of see how that works as a different way to journal on the back, letting somebody else with their wisdom having done the work for us. So I have a little thing of Mod Podge here and a tiny little brush. And let's just put a little bit here because it's not gonna take much. This is not a big messy Mod Podge project. some on that gessoed surface. I didn't squeeze out enough Mod Podge, did I? I have a great big tub of Mod Podge, but sometimes that's in my in my laundry room that's right next to my craft room here. And if I'm just doing something right here at my desk and I just need a little dab, I will often just use something out of my little squeeze bottle and I can refill that. And I love this sentiment. I do believe in writing more letters. And I think that's advice that I feel good about putting into one of my own journals as a reminder to myself. So we've got the Mod Podge below it, and then we're gonna seal it off with just a little thin coat. I think that's going to be cute. And I could put another little um, uh, little punch and a little tassel there, but I'm going to let this whole thing dry. Um, I will show you, I did, when I was practicing for this, I did put a whole um, magazine, uh, a, a little strip from a magazine, a thin magazine uh, page, right on um, the stick to cover the whole thing. I, it came out kind of wrinkly and, you know, of course I would have to paint, you know, the other side as well, but uh, it was practicing, but um, didn't really love it. Um, I think I'll uh, chalk this up to an investment in the research and development process. Um, let's look at one other way that we can, uh, that we can use some of our gessoed craft sticks. Um, to make another kind of decorative element uh, for our journals. And then this, you know, this will be dry pretty soon. Well, that looks like that's... I'll kind of smush that down a little bit. Mod Podge dries fairly quickly. You know, I wonder... This has the stamped side facing down. I, I wonder if I could put a little... A little layer here or is that gonna no that's I think that's gonna smear that's gonna smear um that ink on there yeah I think I'm not gonna continue with uh with that um what I would like to do though is I want to practice using these acrylic inks to actually decorate the front not an artist here but guess what you don't have to be I've been getting more bold with my uh with my watercolor painting and Hearing the words, uh, you know, the, the, the encouraging, uh, gentle voice of my uh, dear YouTube friend, uh, Julie Torrens, in my ear saying, you can do this, Anne. You can do this. And guess what? So can you. Uh, I think I'm going to do just sort of like a little vine there. I think that would be fine. Vine and leaves. And what kind of flowers would I like to put on? How oh, about something pink? That'd be fine and yellow for the centers. Okay, these are, the brand name is Betum. 
not familiar with that. And I thought they would be paint. Um, I have some white acrylic markers that, that say they're, they're paint, like Posca. I started to talk about this earlier. This says it's water-based ink. Is that... Shh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I did read the um, instructions, though, that said keep horizontal. So I did not put them in a, in a bucket on my desk. I, you know, like a stand-up bucket. I put them flat. Um, anyway, so we have one more craft stick here. And let's take the fine point section and I'm going to come in and do a little uh do another little dot there I'm just going to mark that there so I know where I want to come in and punch my hole and I'm just going to do some little leaves and again I don't have to worry about this running in with those wood fibers because I've treated the surface with the gesso and primed it. The reason that this one was starting to run was because the, the ink was on top of the gesso. Um, yeah, oh well, I'm glad I had a spare there and that we could experiment together. And here I'm just going to draw just a long vine like this. I'm going to put in few other leaves and I want something just really kind of springy and summery looking because I want to put this in my garden journal and some of these leaves have partners opposite some of them uh, opposite them and some of them don't and I can always go back in and add more if I had the confidence to draw a little flower pot down here I would do that but um, right now I'm just going to be content with with this very rudimentary drawing and then I think this should work. I'm going to take the round end here and I'm going to just sort of pounce down circles. See, this isn't even drawing. This is just pouncing. There we go. Trying to do this in groups of five because we like our odd numbers in design, don't we? I'm liking how this is looking. And I think this is drying pretty quick too. I'm I'm kind of impressed with how with how these are working. And let's do one more. Maybe I can Well, that one has six uh, petals. That actually looks kind of cute. It's supposed to be, you know, just sort of elementary looking. Now my idea is to do one more. These things are rolling all over the place. They can't help it. They're just following gravity. But I'm going to do one more little pounce in the middle with this yellow. Yeah, I, I'm i glad I got these. And honestly, I think they were $9.95 or something like that. They were super inexpensive. Um, let me punch the top in here. Or punch that top hole because I want to have a little tassel. And I marked that. Let's see if this goes any easier. Well, it certainly makes a statement, doesn't it? It doesn't go quietly. 
I'm going to do the jump ring thing again. I don't know why. I just felt like it. Where's my... Here's the little part where it opens up. And you'll see in a minute why I want to put this in my gardening journal. This is going to be a reminder to myself for the season ahead. Eh, and I probably should, uh, you know, I'm going to go with a larger one. I should have followed my instinct on there and gone for the great big bruisers here. Much easier to handle, much easier. Now, how about some pink? Because we've got some pink going on there. I don't have a whole lot sitting over here, but I might as well grab another little piece of lace. And let's put this through here and make this little tassel for the top. Hold that in one place. Use the pink to make the tie because it was sitting right here as well. This little wood block. That's what I use here on my desk. It's a stand for my phone when I'm watching YouTube videos or movies or the news or other things on my phone when I'm at my craft desk. And it has that nice little, nice little groove in it to have my device at a proper angle. There's a wonderful wood carver that uh, sells wares at... Uh, at our farmers markets around here and I I saw these and I got a whole bunch of them probably well 10 years ago I think right after we moved here all right I'm gonna ink the edges right here let me see how this is doing still a little soggy so that one will not be part of our in journal demonstration but you'll get the idea oh this is looking cute wouldn't it, wouldn't it be pretty to find this in a journal? And here is what I want to do with this. Now this is all perfectly dry now, so it's fine to lay it down. What color should I write in? I'm going to write in green because I want to write about gardening. And here is what I want to remind myself. You are here seeing these brilliant words being recorded. It's a little pale, but I'm going to keep going. Boy, I squeezed that one in <laughs> towards the end, didn't I? Here's my reminder to myself. Garden season starts in January. This is going in my garden journal, so when I finish up things at the end of the year, I don't wait until May to start planning my garden for next year. I had just really just a wonderful gardening year after years of neglecting my garden. And I want to do, I really want to get off on the good, uh, on the, the, the best foot for it uh, next year. So there's my little tag with a little reminder to myself. Here's another reminder to all of us. It is very difficult right now, but we're doing, we're doing the best we can, aren't we? We really are. And this 
one, my little postal thing here, write more letters, that's gonna go in somewhere, but that Mod Podge has to dry. Actually, I could probably Mod Podge this one because that acrylic paint is not gonna smear the way ink does, but I'm gonna leave it here for now. And let's see what these would look like in situ. This is not my garden journal, but I thought you'd like to see. I mean, th th these are so little, I would just tuck them in with something else. I would just, I would just put them, put them in here and I, you know, I haven't written on, on this yet, but you know, when I do, uh, you know, it would just, it just would be really easy to, you know, to pull this out, this out and go, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's all, you can, you can Google, you know, short quote, short quotes, you know, just think, think of a word. Um, you know how our dear uh, Gail Augustine Alley always says, be kind always. Wouldn't that be lovely to have one of these that said, be kind always with some kind of decoration there and uh, make us think of Gail and remember to be kind always. Um, this, I was thinking that this might go nicely. I think I want to put one of these little rabbit ear pockets. Did this a couple months ago. I will link in the description box below if you like, you know, if you like the looks of that little, it, it's kind of a goofy little, little pocket. But look how nice that popsicle stick, that craft stick looks in that tiny little narrow pocket. Yeah, there's room for both. There's room for both in there. Stick this one next door. There we go. Good. I hope you enjoyed this, guys, and I hope you pull out some of the craft sticks or popsicle sticks. These, this whole thing would work uh, on the smaller uh, sticks as well. And um, just find ways that you can have something sort of decorative and delightful and unexpected in your journals. They'd make a great little bookmark. They're very thin. And so, you know, they're thinner than, you know, a thick piece of folded piece of paper. So they're not going to add a lot of extra bulk to your journal. And um, experiment a little bit with, um, you know, how you want to... Um, uh, uh, to put your decorative uh, uh, mediums on that surface, but uh, you're going to find something that's going to, you know, that's going to work great for you. And I hope you have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.